Hi. In the last class uh, we have discussed about the ecological pyramids. Okay. So in this section we are going to discuss about the interaction between organisms. We studied what is meant by the ecosystem. And in an ecosystem there is interaction between organisms. Okay. So what is meant by the interdependence between these organisms? So there is an interdependence. One organism depends upon another type of organism. Okay. So in our, uh, in our classroom, we are depending upon our friends. Okay. So like that, in an ecosystem, one organism depends upon another organisms. So there is an interdependence between the entire organisms in an ecosystem. Okay. So let's see what are these interdependence. Dependence. Okay, so here there is animals and plants in an ecosystem. You can see the animals and the plants. The plants depends upon animals. So like that, what animals also depends upon the plants. So let's see how they are depending each other. Okay, the main reason is what the food and for shelter and protection. And then energy. For all these reasons, the animals and plants are interdependent. Okay. So, the dependence of animals on plants. Animals obtain food from where? From the plants. Okay. Then, animals also obtain oxygen from the plants. Oxygen is a byproduct of what? The photosynthesis. So, during photosynthesis, Oxygen is liberated and this oxygen is taken by the animals. So, oxygen is obtained from the plants. Plants also provide the shade and protection for animals. Animals get shade and protection from the plants. Plants also help in cleaning the atmosphere by obtaining the carbon dioxide. Okay, they are using the carbon dioxide for what? For the photosynthesis. Then, it also helps in the recycling of matter by obtaining the nutrients from the dead and decayed organisms and from the excreta of the organisms. Okay, so for all these reasons, these animals are depending upon plants. So like that, the plants are also depending upon animals. Okay. For what? For carbon dioxide. Plants get this carbon dioxide from the animals. Okay. Then what? Nutrients. Plants obtain the nutrients from the dead and decayed organisms. So from the organic matters, they obtain what? Nutrients. Then for pollination and seed germination. For pollination and seed germination, the plants are depending upon animals. So for all these reasons, there is interdependence between what? Organisms. So between organisms, there is an interdependence. So these are some of the interdependence. Then other than this, there are some special type of uh, interaction between organisms of different species. So between organisms of different species, there are some what some extra some specific interactions okay so we call these specific interactions as what the interspecific interactions so in between two different species there may be some specific interactions so this specific type of interactions is known as what interspecific interactions okay and this interspecific interaction, it may be of two types. It may be positive or negative. If it is positive, it is known as beneficial interaction. Okay, if it is positive, it is known as beneficial interaction. So in beneficial interaction, one or both the members, one or both the interacting members, the interacting species are benefited no one is harmed 
Okay, so that type of uh, interaction it is known as the positive interaction or it is beneficial interaction. The second type is the negative type. Okay, that is mean the antagonistic interaction. Here only one of the organism, one of the interacting member, one is benefited, and the other one is harmed. Okay, one is benefited and the other one is what harmed. So this type of interaction is known as antagonistic interaction or negative interaction. So there are negative and positive interactions, interspecific interactions. Then symbiosis and commensalism, these are what positive interaction, parasitism and predation, these are what negative interactions. So these are the two types of interactions. Okay. Now let's see what are these types of uh, interspecific interactions. Now let's see what are these types of specific interspecific interactions. Okay. So now we are going to study about these interactions. So we will study about the symbiosis, parasitism, and retention. Okay. So the first one is what symbiosis. It's a type of positive interaction. Okay, so here both the partners, both the species are benefited. So in symbiosis, we can see a close long-term interaction, interdependence between two different species. So it's as it is an association of different species. So it's a long-term interdependence. It's a positive interaction. Here both the organisms are benefited. Okay. So for example, lichens. Lichens is an example for what? Symbiosis. Okay, there are two partners. A fungus and a alga. These are the two partners. And here both are benefited. Okay. Here the alga provide the food to the fungal partner. Okay. And the fungal partner, it, it, it gives protection to the alga. So there is what? A mutual interdependence. So both are benefited here. Okay. So like that, there is another example that is what? Flowers and pollinators. We know that the bees and the butterflies are the common pollinators of the flowers. Okay. These insects, they get nectar from the flower. Okay, they obtain nectar from the flower and in turn they help the pollinators, the bees and butterflies helps in the pollination of the flowers. Okay, so there is what there is also both of them are benefited. So this type of interaction is a positive interaction. Okay, so this is what symbiosis. The next one that we are going to discuss is what the parasitism. It's a negative interaction. That means one is benefited and the other one is harmed. Okay. So here one is benefited and one is harmed. The organism which is benefited is known as the parasite. Usually this parasite it lives on or inside the other organism. Okay. And the one which is harmed is known as the host. So the parasite may live in or on the body of the host. Okay, so there is one is benefited. The benefited organism is known as the parasite. And one is harmed, which is known as the host. Okay. And there are two types of parasites. There are ectoparasites and endoparasites. The ectoparasites which live on the body of the host. For example, ticks, fleas, lice and bugs, all these are what? Ectoparasites. They obtain the blood. They feed the blood from the host. Okay. Then endoparasites, which are live inside the body, in the body, inside the body of the host. Okay. So for example, Ascaris, tapeworms, Cascuta, all these are what? Examples of what? The endoparasites. Some of the endoparasites may cause some diseases in the host. Okay, so it's a type of a negative interaction, 
antagonistic interaction. Okay. Now let's see the next one that is what predation. It's also a negative type. Okay. So here one organism is here. There is an interaction, an interdependence between two different species. Okay. Here one hunts and feeds the other. The organism which hunt and feed is known as the predator. And the organism which is killed and eaten is known as the prey. So there is an interaction between the prey and the predator. So that is known as what? Predation. For example, in the case of a rat and a snake, rat is the prey and the snake is the predator. Okay. So here, one organism which hunts and feeds the other organism. The organism which hunt and feed, it, it is known as what? The predator. And the organism which is killed and eaten is known as the prey. So these are all some of the interaction, the interdependence between two different species. So we discussed what? The symbiosis, parasitism and uh, predation. Okay. So far we have discussed about the biotic factors of the ecosystem. We know that in an ecosystem we can see the biotic factors as well as the abiotic factors. Okay. So we have discussed mainly about the biotic factors, the living things. All the living things can be considered as the biotic factors. So these biotic factors they interact with each other and also they interact with other non-living things these are known as what the abiotic factors so let's know about what are these abiotic factors okay so the abiotic components of the uh, the ecosystem that is means what these are the non-living components so these non-living components of the ecosystem can be classified into these types this much types Okay, so there are there are inorganic substances, then what physical factors, climatic factors, and the ataphic factors. So these are the classification of what the abiotic components or the non-living components of the ecosystem. Okay, so what is mean by the inorganic substances? This may include the minerals and the gases. We know we need oxygen to survive. Okay, so oxygen is a gas. Then carbon dioxide, all these are what? Inorganic, inorganic substances. Okay. Then minerals, phosphorus, calcium, potassium. We need all these things. Okay. So minerals and the gases are included in the inorganic substances. These are abiotic components. Okay. So we are depending upon them. Okay. We depend on them. Then what? The physical factors. That may include the air, then what? The climatic factors, the sunlight, the temperature, humidity, okay, the wind. So, then what? Ataphic factors. This means the properties of the soil, the chemical, biological, and physical properties of the soil. All these are included in the ataphic factors. Okay, so all these are what? The abiotic components, the non living components of the ecosystem. Okay. So we are interacting with these abiotic components. So there is an interaction between the abiotic and biotic components of the ecosystem. Okay. So now in this section we are going to conclude. Okay. In the next class, in the next section, we will learn about some of these abiotic factors in detail. So we have to study about some of these abiotic components of the ecosystem. Okay. So when you, know, um, you may go through your textbook and if you find any difficulty, you can call me or message me. Okay? So, bye-bye.